Thanks for joining me today. This is Jen with Gentastic Journey, including card crafting. Today you're going to need a paper trimmer and a scoreboard, a bone folder if you have them. If not, we will make do. And this is the card we're going to make today. It's a beautiful puzzle card. It's a variation of the gatefold card. I just think this is really pretty. It stands up really nicely. We're going to make several of these. This is the Halloween card that I told you I had done a variation of this card. I just whacked pieces off of that and then put it all together. Today you could use any little scenes. You could make your own. I decided to use this bigger sheet because a lot of you probably have sheets that are 6 by 6 or 12 by 12 and so these are even some bigger ones that you could use for fall or for more of a masculine card. But I'm going to use a very feminine looking card today with these pink flowers and we're going to trim these down. First I wanted to show you what the card base looked like and I already pre-cut the card base. You're going to need a background piece and then two other pieces. And then here are the dimensions. And I'm going to put this in the description box below so don't feel like you have to look at this, but just to let you know what we're doing. And then I will also have some longer views of this that you can take screenshots of at the end of the video. Okay, my card base is four and a quarter by nine and a half inches. And so again, I've already cut that apart because I knew I was going to do several of these. Then you're going to take your scoreboard and you're going to score it at one inches and two inches. I guess it's one inch and two inches. <laughs> Flip it over and on the other side you're going to do one inch and two inch. And you could also do seven and a half and eight and a half if you have a longer scoreboard. I have a short one so that's why I did it that way. And then you're going to Z fold this so that the flap is kind of out. And then you're going to want to make sure you burnish those really well. And you want to make sure you fold that where it's going to touch the very tip of that edge of that paper because that's going to be important so everything fits perfectly. You guys know I don't like to do a lot of measuring but this has a lot of measuring and then everything has to be very precise and I'm not very precise either so you'll see I'll show you several of my errors along the way and I've made a bunch of these so I still make probably the same types of errors on these cards. So this is what it's going to look like when that's done. And then uh, we can set that aside and work on the inside and the outside panel next, which are those two pink sheets. And you don't have to have an inside panel if you don't want to, but if you do, this is just the measurements of that. And I started with the outside panel actually, and the outside panel is going to be what the picture goes on. And so this is going to be four and a quarter inches by five and a half. And that'll go on the outside behind the other paper. And then this is the inside panel that is what you would write on. So again, not necessary, but the measurements are there if you need it. It's four by five and a quarter just to give you a little bit of a border. And it would be a white border since we have a white card base. So again, that'll sit in there really nice. You'll see later on I decide to add a third piece. But okay, and now we're going to try and use as much of the picture as we can. And we're going to cut our paper. This is going to go on top of the outside panel. So this is four by five and a quarter. And then you always want to save your scraps. You're going to see I decide that that piece has a lot of empty space. So that's going to go perfectly on the inside. So I end up cutting that down a little bit. I'm going to put it inside of the four by five and a quarter inch. So I'm just going to cut that a little bit less. So about a quarter of an inch less so that it has a little bit of that pink as well. I think that'll look a little fancier. Again, definitely not necessary. We're going to cut some strips across and it shows you there that you're going to cut the bigger piece at one and one sixteenth. One sixteenth is the very teeny tiny mark next to the one. If your paper trimmer doesn't to the sixteenths, it would be a halfway to the eighth. And you're just gonna cut four equal ones. And you're gonna wanna make sure you do this fairly accurately. I am kind of breezing through this, but if you want to be more accurate, please do that. And then the pattern paper, you're gonna want to cut at one inch. And again, there's gonna be four pieces, so three cuts. Be as precise as you can with this. It makes all the difference when you're putting it together, as you'll see as I put the card together. <laughs> I make it a little harder myself because I did, for some reason, cut a few of these wrong, but we'll make it through. And I think it's good to show you how we fix those errors. So again, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you make these pieces always go back into the same shape, right? So that everything's butting up against what it's supposed to butt up against so that we don't lose our picture. Because it's supposed to be a puzzle and when you push it all together it's going to show you this the original scene. So I'm just putting these all together so that I don't lose my place in what I'm trying to do. And then I'm going to pull this paper back together and this is on the other side and it's going to show you how to trim the outside panel which is the pink and then how to trim the pattern paper. So then we're going to trim that first one at one and a quarter. We're going to trim the second one at 
two and three eighths and three eighths would be three of the medium size little pegs on there if you're not sure about how to measure. There's a lot of videos out there on how to measure using a paper trimmer or ruler or anything like that. Third one was three and an eighth, and then this last one is four and a quarter. And I just hide that one side on the instruction sheet because I will inevitably cut it wrong if I leave the other one showing. So this first one is at one and one eighth. The second one is at two and a quarter. And the third one is exactly three inches and my paper trimmer doesn't really have a three on there so I kind of uh, had to eyeball it and then you'll see here that I think that I measured those wrong and we'll figure that out later. Definitely measured those wrong. <laughs> so I didn't do it right on my paper trimmer and I'm starting to go back and going what? where did I screw that up but we'll fix it. And then the last one is at four and an eighth. Okay, and for this one, I just made the pattern paper a little bit long, so we will fix that. I wanna make sure that I have, again, the puzzle piece right. And I'm gonna use my paper trimmer because I want these to be really straight, really nice lines. And I'm going to then put that other piece over by the original piece. So nobody will ever know except for you guys. And then the important part here is I usually move the pattern paper over like I would open a book so that when I bring it back over, I ran out of my tape runner, so I brought out my other one. But you just wanna gonna want to make sure you don't mess up the pattern. But whichever way you want to do it, just do it consistently all the way across. And then you're going to want to keep these all together. So again, you don't lose the pattern. So again, I flip it over, flip it back. And if for some reason I didn't measure exactly, I put the lesser of the pink background paper towards the center because that's where it's all going to line up anyway. And so you don't want big pieces of that pink to be showing. Now I realized here too that there is way too much pink paper there so I obviously cut this piece wrong too. It's because I rush and because I don't like to measure so I'm going to show you how I'm going to fix this one but because I've already glued it I'm going to have to cut the pink piece off and attach that to the bottom of the other one. So the first one I did it a little differently but this one I'm going to actually use the the outside piece and just put a little piece of tape there and the tape runner on the other part and nobody will ever see it if they do oh well it's a handmade card okay and then we're going to take the next one do the same thing and these should all match up if you do better cutting than I do these should all match up really nicely and then this last piece as you saw earlier this is the one where I had to fix it so I'm going to make sure that they match up and then I think I'm just gonna adhere it straight to the pink paper and that way it all will match up perfectly. I keep getting my tape runner all over my <laughs> desk pad, but it's totally fine. It comes off really easy. And on to piece number four, or I guess row number four. I'm just double checking, making sure that it matches up because I keep getting myself confused. This last part is it's just, it's not really like flowers where you could see them all butting up against each other. So this one was a little harder for me. I was just double checking myself. Again, fold it like a book and it should be fine. Or I should open it like a book and then it should be fine. Okay, and this is the last piece. I feel like I cut these a little bit more narrow than the other ones and this would have been the last piece, So, but it'll all look great. Okay, so now you wanna make them all come back horizontally. So I'm just moving those all back into place, but horizontally because that's how we're gonna mount it to the card. I guess I could have started it that way, but that's just the way it worked out for now and making sure everything matches up. And then I use glue and this is my Ranger Multimedia Matte Finish Glue. And the reason for that is because I'm gonna wanna move it around a little bit because I want it to go exactly to the edge of the right hand and then also right to the edge of the top part. So there's no white showing. And then I'm gonna move down because I wanna make sure these all press up right against each other and again, that there's no white showing at the end there. And I used a nice glue where I could move them around, but you guys get the point there that I'm just gonna move them down, move them down, and then we'll do the other side across in just a second. And again, I'm still making sure that I've got the right puzzle pieces because you wouldn't wanna get to the end and not have the right puzzle pieces in there. And then on to the next piece. So I put my scissors there hoping it would hold it down enough, but it really doesn't. But you want to make sure that you're holding it down and then bringing that other edge right to the edge of the other puzzle piece. So it really doesn't matter how far it goes over on the left. It's really, it needs to butt up against that puzzle piece and not go past it. And then we're going to move down and do that again with all of these. And you want to make sure that you have it definitely matched up against that other puzzle piece and not so concerned concerned about where it is at the edge of the card. If you measured it correctly, there shouldn't be any edge showing at the edge of the card. It should be perfect. And then I'm just putting the rest of the glue on there because this glue doesn't dry very fast, so I have plenty of time to 
get it all matched up. And then there's our last piece. And again, just making sure that that butts up against the one above it and the one next to it. And we have a completed card or almost a completed card. We still have to do the inside, but that's the general idea of it. And because, you know, I'm not that precise and I cut really fast and everything, there's a little bit of a difference in in each one, but you can't tell when you're looking at the card truly. Don't overstress about the measurements. And then I'm gonna put these inside pieces. Again, you could have left that white, you could have left it with the pink piece, or you could do what I did, and I just happened to have that piece. And I'm using a tape runner here because this paper is a little bit thin, and sometimes if you put liquid glue on very thin paper, it will warp or you can see the glue kind of warping that paper. So tape runner is a little bit safer. So these are the other two cards that I made and I did them in the same exact way, just different papers. So I wanted you to see what that would look like. And now I'm gonna have you help me put some sentiments on here. And I have this tub of sentiment strips that I'm pulling out so that we can see what we'd like to put on some of these. And I have these little cutouts. They're pre-cut out and this one happens to be a rose gold, which I thought would go really well with the roses. And I'm always needing happy birthday cards. So I'm using the coordinating scrap and that is how I will put together that happy birthday one. And now I have to choose some for the other card. And this one I'm gonna use a yellow and I'm gonna put my sentiment on that yellow scrap piece. I always have kind of an internal game with myself where I make sure that I use as many of the scraps as I can in the project. I do have a scrap bin, but I do like to use as much of it as I can. It just makes me feel like I accomplished a lot when I've done it. And I do also decorate typically the outside of the envelope as well and the inside. So I usually am able to use a lot of my scraps that way. All right, so I'm not putting any dimensions on this really. I'm just gluing it down to the yellow piece. I don't want it to be too big because I really don't want it to be a lot bigger than the width of those puzzle pieces. So you hear, see here, I'm just gonna trim this down a little bit. And then this was the inside piece color. And so then I'm gonna use the outside panel color as well. I used yellow for the inside because I just thought it would be easier to write something on that instead of red. Red is a little bit too dark of a color for me to write something on the inside of a card. And I'm just using, a, leaving a very small border that came out really pretty. And I could have colored that white around the lettering, but I thought that looked bright and fun. And there is a lot of black in that card. So I thought it went along just fine. Now here you need to make sure that you don't glue on the other side of the puzzle. So if I'm putting it on the right side, I can't put glue on the left side. You'll see I will do it because I just was going along and here I put a glue on the wrong side and said, nope, that's not where I want the glue. If you did that, the card wouldn't be able to open. So that's why it's important just to keep it on the left side. This will actually strengthen that puzzle section when you put that sentiment right there. So I think that's a good place to put it. Moving on to the next one, I'm just putting some dots of glue with my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue, which I love for little teeny tiny precise stuff like this. And this is the other side of the rose paper. It had a green on the back, which was, I thought, pretty for this sentiment. And I'm just making sure I don't have any extra glue because the glue is matte and the, obviously it's shiny, so I don't want any matte glue on there. And then I'm just going to trim this down, hand trim this, and then same thing, I decided I need something behind it, and because I had pink scraps, <laughs> I'm going to put a little bit of pink behind that, and that will be fine. And then I'm just again going to use some glue for this, and because I wanted to use up my scraps, you certainly don't have to do it this way, but I am going to just cheat a little bit, and I'm going to use the scrap that is too small, and then I found another scrap and I'm just gonna put those together because I'm putting such a small amount behind the green sheet. Nobody will ever know that it's two different pieces of paper and it's a good way to use up scraps again. Hopefully you guys can use this when you get in a pinch for this stuff too. This time I put the glue only on the <laughs> sentiment piece. Okay, and for this last one, I wanted a little bit of a longer strip and I'm gonna put those two little yellow pieces behind it. For some reason, I didn't have as much yellow scraps as I did of everything else. So I'm gonna use this happy anniversary. I'm just gonna glue these two yellow pieces behind it. You won't be able to tell. It's unless you're really, really looking up close to it. I give my cards to friends and family. I do not sell them. So that's why I can be a little less precise and can do things like using up my scraps. It always makes me feel good when I can use up my scraps. So why not? And I'm putting a very small border so it helps with you not being able to tell as well. Okay, and then that was really, really white 
and because my background is off-white, kind of a cream color, I decided that I needed to make it a little bit darker and I'm using my Vintage Photo Distress Oxide and I'm just rubbing a little bit against it to darken up that white. I could have used another yellow as well, but the Vintage Photo kind of has a yellow tint to it that worked out exactly as I needed it to. And then I'm using a roll of foam tape. That's the only one that I put some dimension to. Because I can't leave well enough alone, pulled out some other things, just embellishments to put on. So these little sunflowers are super fun. And because I have two cards with sunflowers, I couldn't resist. I put some glue on the back of that. And I'm going to do the same for this one. And I just used my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue. I have that little blob that's part of the paper, but it doesn't really go, in my opinion, <laughs> on that sheet. So we'll put this flower in front of it. And then for this last one, I pulled out my bows. I have a white one. I could use a pink one. I didn't have any greens that would match. But I went with the white because the pink melded in too much. I'm just putting a little bit of my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue on there and holding that little down a little bit. And then here, I'm just going to hold up this piece of paper so that you can take a screenshot if you'd like. And then same with the other side. This is what you do with the little panels when you cut it into the puzzle pieces. I will also put this below in the description box, so don't feel like you have to take a screenshot. And then here's just a couple close-ups of each card. Again, I really like that I was able to use that other half of the piece for that inside panel. I think that made all the difference with that. And this is what these look like when they're standing up. So they're nice cards to put on display. This is another one I did off camera, but again, this one is really pretty. I put a strip of that paper at the bottom of the inside and used that yellow for the inside because I thought it would be easier to write on. And then here's the other sunflower card and I have it upside down. <laughs> that one has yellow on the outside and yellow, uh, yellow outline on the inside. And then I used a piece of the same paper for the inside. And then I wanted to pull out my Halloween card, which again, I mentioned this when I did my Halloween card video, but I just basically cut up this piece and then I cut the strips. The strips are important. You either have to have straight strips along one side or along the other. Here's just a close up of each card. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, please click the subscribe button. And if you liked this content, hit the like button and share this out to your friends. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'll see you in the next video.